We all know that in order to be in good alignment, your elbow must be either in line or even behind the arrow line when at full draw. And in this video, I'm gonna show you that you can get your elbow behind the arrow line before you even pick up your bow. So as I said there in the intro, you know that in order to be in proper alignment, your elbow should be at least in line with the arrow if not behind it when you're at full draw. Now, if you're interested in checking if your own alignment is good or not, you can have somebody with a camera stand behind you when you're pointing down range and take a picture from directly behind you, possibly with a slightly elevated angle. And what you want to do is put this string dead in the center of the limb when you're at full draw and snap the photo. And then look for your elbow and see in relation to the string of the bow, where is it? If your elbow's outside the arrow line, away from your body, that means that you're not necessarily in the best alignment that you may possibly be able to be in. Or if your elbow is at least in line, if not behind the line, then you're in the ideal alignment. Another alternative would be to use a camera overhead here, like I've got above me, and then you can check from that position as well and look for the elbow to be in line or behind the arrow line and then also check these two shoulders and this front wrist and make sure they're all in a straight line. For more information on how to get into alignment and what good alignment looks like, I will have links in the description below and a card at the top up there to a video specifically about alignment. I'm not gonna spend too much time on that in today's video, but what I wanna show you is how you can get your elbow behind the arrow line before you even pick up your bow. Now what I'm wanting to cover in this video is that you can start the shot off on the right foot by putting your elbow behind the arrow line with one simple move. It's just a simple position change. And if you start this way, it may be easier to keep your elbow in line or behind the arrow line, making alignment easier to keep. Many people, if they were shooting at a target, will pretend you are my target, they will tend to point the arrow directly at the target. And when I'm in this position here, pointing the arrow at the target, you can clearly see that my elbow is already outside of the arrow line, not in ideal alignment. Obviously I'm not pulling the bow back, so it's not necessarily super applicable because I could pull the bow back like this and then get into decent alignment, but it requires a little bit more effort as opposed to starting simply like this, where I move my hand, my string hand, slightly outside of my body, outside of the line directly to the target. And now the arrow is pointing to the left of my target, but I did not move my bow hand to the left. I moved my string hand to the right. It's very, very simple, and essentially that's all you need to do. So in a position here, this is called set position in the KSL shot cycle, I can already have my elbow behind the arrow line. I'm not tucking my shoulder, I'm not getting into alignment, I'm not rotating or doing anything outside of the fact that I'm just moving my hand slightly to the right, just a little bit. It's really important that you keep your bow hand directly in line with the target. As I'm lifting it up, my hand is not moving from the left, to the right or any sort of candy cane as many people have misconstrued and misinterpreted this method in the past. The bow hand moves straight up as I'm lifting the bow right directly in line with the target. And I keep it there the entire time through my entire draw cycle as I'm hitting my different positions. The next position that you want to really make sure that your elbow is still behind the arrow line is in set up position right about here. That's when I've raised the bow from set position here up to set up position before I go to draw the bow back. Many people will lift the bow and follow their bow to brace height upon lifting, and that looks something like this. We know that this is brace height, where the bow is at rest, and if I lift from this position here where my elbow is behind the arrow line, and I lift it up and I follow brace height like this, you'll see that my alignment really, really suffers when I do so. Even if I put my hand outside the arrow line, it's very uncomfortable and it's not necessarily a very strong position to draw from. So I do lift and rotate a little bit backwards with this draw side. And I'll have another video for that specific move, a link in the description below and a card at the top up there. The important part there is that my hand is not in line with the target. It's still outside a considerable amount, just like this. My arrow is pointed to the left of my target, my camera here, but you'll see that my elbow is still in line if not behind the arrow line before I even draw the bow back. Now when I draw from this position, the string and the knock move in a straight line to my face and my shoulder moves around and behind me as I draw the bow. You'll see here, 
When I draw from that position, the string and the knock move straight to my chin when I come up into anchor, no matter where I'm anchoring, higher or lower, but the shoulder itself is moving around and behind me. That's another really easy, confusing thing that many people make as far as a mistake is concerned. They will take the string hand and pull it in an arcing fashion, like so, to their chin, and it's a very inefficient and very wasteful way to draw the bow back because that's not how we want to exert forces into the bow, into the system with efficiency to make shooting archery much easier. So if I'm starting from here, again, elbow behind the arrow line, pointing the arrow to the left by moving the hand to the right, not the bow hand at all. That stays directly between me and my target. The hand of the bow hand still raises straight up, does not move in any sort of arc. The hand continues to stay further out, but the shoulder does rotate ever so slightly to get into set up position. Elbow is behind the arrow line or in line with the arrow line at that point. And then I draw with the posterior deltoid area of my shoulder around and behind me. The hand, the string hand moves directly to my anchor in a straight line, not in an arcing line. And then I am able to be in decent alignment, at least as best as I possibly can be within reason because I do have some limitations in my body and you may as well. So your alignment may not be perfect right away, but over time as you work on these types of moves to make the shot a little bit easier, to get into better alignment, making things much more efficient, you'll develop that range of motion and the motor control over time and it will get better. Again, if you wanna check it, just a camera angle straight from behind, put that string in the center of the belly of the limb and then you'll really be able to see if you're in alignment or at least where your elbow is in relation to that string. Because in the comment section, I'm gonna get asked lots of questions in regards to what bow this is. This is a JT Traditional Archery Zeus in 66 inches that I had custom made for me by John. He builds a really cool bow. This is my only and first traditional custom bow that has been built for me, and I really, really enjoy this. Even though I demonstrated to you today how to do this movement with a traditional bow, all styles of archery with the exception of compound can use this method. Any single string bow that does not have a cam on it, you can draw the bow and set up your shot cycle, your motion to lift and draw the bow back just this exact same way. Bare bow, recurve, traditional, or any other single string bow like I said. Hey, if you like this video, consider sharing it. Genuinely, it really helps this channel grow. Hitting that subscription button and the notification bell down below also helps this channel out. And if you wouldn't mind, please do consider supporting this channel. There's many different links in the description below. I produce all this content for archers around the world to enjoy for free, and I can't thank my supporters enough. Without you, I wouldn't be able to produce this much content, at least not to this level, so thanks.